So hi folks, uh, well I've finally got the Skymax 180 on the EQ8R and uh, it's nicely balanced, we're all ready to go. It's probably not going to be uh, the most ideal night or evening. It still doesn't get dark here. Um, so we're going to be trying this out uh, kind of twilight. Um, it's also been very hot so uh, I sincerely doubt that the scene is going to be much good. Um, but you know what? I'm impatient uh, so I'm going to give it a go anyway. So if the clouds stay away, uh, let's give it a try in the next couple of hours. Welcome to Astrogadge. So it's 20 past 2 in the morning, it's still not astronomically dark and it won't be because it's going to get light in about an hour and a half. Um, the moon's looking good, uh, a bit of high cloud but looking a lot better than forecast. Uh, got everything up and running and um, we're ready to go and, and see what this thing can do. Well folks. Um, looks like aligning the finder scope the other day really paid off. The sky is actually very clear. <laughs> I can't believe it. I've got everything set up. I've got it focused. And... Yeah, it's good. It's really good. I like it a lot. Absolutely fantastic views. Full of contrast, sharp as hell. I'm able to find fine tweak the focusing with the micro focuser and it, it looks absolutely stunning. This is the view down the eyepiece um, using my smartphone just to give you some idea uh, what it's like visually. I know it's not quite the same, but you, you get you get the idea. Pretty damn good. Alright, so I've got the camera on it now. It's the ASI385 one-shot colour camera. Um, here's the view. <laughs> Beautiful view of the up and out mountains. Beautiful detail. Really sharp. Uh, I can't wait to get these processed. I mean, this is without snacking or anything, this is a live view. Ah, lovely. Ready to get these um, processed tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, show what this can actually look like once it's, it's, it's been uh, stacked. I mean, just look at the detail. That, that's, that's, that's fantastic. I haven't had a chance to actually check the collimation yet, but if that collimation is out, well, my goodness. Um, still, I need to check it, see if we are well collimated or not, but so far uh, it looks pretty good. Down the eyepiece I can see that there's perfect concentric rings, uh, so the instrument looks well collimated, um, even out of the box. I'm absolutely astounded and very happy. Well folks, it's... Uh... 10 past 3 in the morning, um, it's going to be, well, it's going to, the sun's going to start rising in about half an hour, 45 minutes, and the clouds are starting to come in, to say the least, but you know what, it's been a pretty good session and I'm well pleased, um, everything seems to have gone really well for once, <laughs> uh, one of these rare occasions where everything you set out to do, you actually happens. So, I'm off to bed, <laughs> it's, it's very early in the morning and uh, I'll, I'll speak to you once I uh, get this up on the, the PC to process. 
Hi folks, well it's the, the day after the uh, first light on the Skymax uh, 180 and uh, so what are my impressions of it? Well, firstly it seems to be very well made, it's, it's a very robust um, optical tube assembly. It uh, Optically it gives fantastic uh, visual views, it's, the, the views are crisp and contrasty. And I think the um, term uh, that's been given to Apo Lake is, is, is very well deserved. It, uh, uh, it is, and uh, it, it does give spectacular visual views. The other thing I was impressed with, again, that many reviews have, have um, reported this, was that the collimation seems to be very, very stable. Uh, I mean, that instrument was more or less just out of the box. And as far as I could tell to my eye at least, uh, the, the collimation was spot on. Um, you would have expected it uh, throughout the shipping to be jarred and mishandled, but if it was, I certainly seen no evidence of that on the, the collimation, which augurs well because that's one of the reasons I, I went for this particular instrument. I, d I didn't want to have an instrument that I had to collimate every single session. This instrument has a 2700 millimeter focal length, which uh, has certain implications in terms of its use. It, it, as I said earlier, it, it was mainly intended as a lunar and planetary scope, although it, it's been quoted, and, and certainly my feeling is as well, that it, it's probably actually going to be quite good and small, but bright uh, deep space objects such as planetary nebula or globular clusters, things like that. Again, I really would like to go and try that out just to, to see for myself, but certainly it looks like it could be capable of, some, of, of imaging some uh, DSOs at least. And another implication uh, of the focal length of this instrument means that it's going to be very susceptible to seeing conditions and transparency. So I wouldn't expect to get the best views or best images out of it uh, if the conditions aren't that great. In the same vein, it's absolutely crucial to have spot-on polar alignment when you're using this instrument. And probably more importantly, your focusing needs to be absolutely spot-on, absolutely on point. Um, again, at that focal length, it's going to be much, much less forgiving than a short focal length refractor for sure. So, yeah, you absolutely need, in my opinion anyway, uh, a micro focuser uh, attached to the system such as, such as we've done uh, because as I say the, the focusing needs to be absolutely critical and on point. As we talked about earlier uh, one of the things this instrument needs is, is some time to cool down or for the temperature inside the tube to equilibrate if you're going to get the best out of it. Uh, again I would give it a couple of hours if you're taking it from a warm house outside give it a couple of hours to cool down however you can mitigate that if you have a garage um, and, and, and leave the thing in there permanently um, so that uh, when you do take it out the cool down time is not as long or if you're fortunate enough to have a, a permanent setup and observatory again you could, you could leave it in there um, until it's time to be used. So a lot of what I've said here means that this is definitely not a beginner scope. I, I think this, it's, it's, it's a scope that's got a particular end use in mind and um, you know I, I think with the, the the long focal length such as it has and the, the various other quirks of this particular instrument means it's 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 not an ideal scope for a beginner so as I just said one of the implications of, of the scope is because of its its long focal length you need to be absolutely spot-on uh, in terms of your focusing uh, and also of course seeing helps well the session last night seeing wasn't great and I didn't spend nearly enough time or care over the focusing as you're about to see and I've paid the price for that uh, I guess I was I was too excited to actually sit down and think oh come on hang on a minute we've got to get this absolutely spot on um, so yeah the 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 images I took, um, let's just say they aren't the best, but um, it's a new scope. I haven't, um, I haven't imaged at this focal length before, so I guess it's a learning curve. And um, I always kind of find uh, focusing on on planets and 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 the moon 
um, more difficult than deep space objects. I think it's because um, you know with stars you can actually sort of uh, quantify your focus a lot more easily than looking at uh, the surface feature of the moon that's shimmering about in, in the field of view. So the, the learning point from this from my perspective is, is spend more time on the focus and make sure it's spot on. So to answer the, the question that was posed at the beginning of these videos, is the SkyMax 180 any good? Well, I have to say, yes it is. I think particularly at the, the, the price point it's, it's, it's been sold at, yes it is. I, th I think that it's a great instrument if it's used as it's intended to be. Uh, and if, like me, you, you're new to imaging at that kind of focal length, well, there's going to be a learning curve involved and uh, that's just the way it's going to be. But yes, I'm actually very pleased with it. From just a couple of sessions I've been able to use it, I, I, think, uh, I think I'm going to have fun with this scope. So if you've got any um, experience of lunar and planetary imaging uh, at this kind of focal length and you've got any helpful tips and suggestions, Please, please put them in the, the comments box below and share them with myself and anybody else who cares to watch. Uh, and uh, I'd be really grateful for that. Meantime, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you like the content, don't forget to give the thumbs up. And feel free to subscribe. It doesn't cost anything and it just means you'll get a heads up in any future content I may post. So, thanks again for watching. And remember, keep watching the skies. Watch the skies everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the sky.